Oh, really, Janet Yellen? Really? Things are that great. Janet Yellen, on a recent trip to Detroit, proclaimed that the U.S. economy, right now, the one that most of us are living in, and she probably is referring to the rest of the world as well, what the heck, she proclaimed the economy is stronger now than it was before the pandemic. Look, I've got a list of stories we're going to go over this morning. Clear facts that I think point in an opposite direction to what our friend Janet is saying. I don't know what planet she lives on and how isolated she is in her office there in Washington, D.C., but when we go out and feel what's going on. And when we talk about these interesting stories that I'm going to share with you this morning, we see the picture painted in a little bit different manner. I'll let you decide for yourself, but let's get started right now. Do you think that maybe Janet needs to trot on over to the people at the Gallup poll and see the results of their recent survey, which showed that 56 percent, not 55, not 54, 56 percent of Americans reported they are experiencing financial hardships because of inflation. And it gets even worse. 12 percent of people expressed that they were having severe difficulties, severe hardships because of inflation. Those are people without enough money to buy their basic necessities for life. But the economy is so strong, right, Janet? Those numbers, by the way, are up significantly from a year ago. So now a majority of Americans are reporting that they are experiencing financial hardship. Well, I heard back from Janet Yellen's secretary. She regrets that she wasn't able to join me today in the basement, but you did. And to me, that's even better because you are important wherever in the world you are joining me right now. Thank you. I appreciate you giving me some of your precious time. If you happen to enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel, give the video a thumbs up, turn on the bell notifications, Share it with anybody you like, but leave a comment in the comment section below. Share your thoughts. Share your ideas. We want to learn from you, and we want to learn about you. Those fine folks at Gallup then went on to provide us with some very interesting insights into what people are doing because of this high inflation. Guess what they're not doing? They're not going out to eat as much, they're not traveling as much, and they're shopping at more of the discount stores. Thank you for that keen insight, my friends at the Gallup Poll. What we can find interesting is that they broke it down by political party, and Republicans, 67%, were expressing financial hardship, as opposed to Democrats, only 44%. I found that a little bewildering and interesting at the same time. And the Queen of England passed away at 96 years old, Queen Elizabeth II. That doesn't have anything really to do with the price of gold or silver or the economy, but that was kind of sad. I have to admit, she was a real class act. I think that the people in England beloved their queen. I don't know, because I've never been to England, and I only get to hear from the mainstream media that portrays the queen as a beloved figure in England. Nonetheless, that's sad news. But what is interesting is that there was a new report out that showed that Americans, young Americans, between the age of 35 and 44 last year, passed away. They also died at twice the rate of previous years. Very weird, and I don't really understand what's causing that. And further shocking news on the real estate market. Our friends at Goldman Sachs reported this week to expect, they warned us, to expect further downturns in the real estate market in 2023. What I'm thinking about, too, is what about commercial real estate? You know that companies aren't renting as much commercial space. How's that being impacted? We're not hearing anything about that. I'd be curious if you have an opinion on that matter. 
We also had headlines telling us that mortgage rates have now almost doubled from the beginning of the year. That means that the monthly payment on the average house compared to, let's say, two years ago has pretty much doubled. It's no wonder, right? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that that's going to lead to a big, big downturn in the real estate market. And I made a big mistake when preparing for this video. I was reading an article that shocked me. It said 36% of U.S. households report that they cannot pay. They're having a hard time paying for their kids' back-to-school supplies. And then I read the article again a little bit later and realized it didn't say 36% are having a problem. It said only 36% of American families say that they can afford to pay for their school supplies. That means that, what, if my math is correct, 64%, almost two-thirds of American families can't pay for their kids' back-to-school school supplies. Then this article that I read went on to interview these people that were making $100,000 per year. And they're saying, hey, we can't afford to buy our kids' back-to-school supplies. We're going to the dollar store. And they did also mention that the dollar store is now the dollar twenty-five store. We're starting there, and what we can't get there, then we're going to Walmart. What we can't get there, then we're going to Target. American families are hurting. How how can Janet Yellen sit there and say, oh, the economy is so great, everything is awesome, and you know, maybe it is for a couple small pockets, and, and maybe a union guy working at Ford up in Michigan making the F-150 Lightning, hey, I have total respect for that and for the work you're doing and everything else, but you're making a really great income. A lot of people aren't making that much money. A lot of people are more like making 50000 per year, and they can't afford the basics. They can't afford the supplies to send their kids back to school. But the economy is great. Yeah, right. When fewer people have enough money to buy goods, that slows things down, slows the economy down, slows the trade down between people. That leads to severe recession, and it's likely headed our way. And when that happens, the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell are going to be forced to pivot from their hawkish, hawkish, uber hawkish, more hawkish, more hawkish than we could have ever imagined they would get. They're going to have to pivot from that stance. And that's going to mean, right, that the dollar goes down and gold and silver go up to where they should be. Gold at 1700 silver at 1840 whatever it's at right now. Hey, look, guys, that's a crappy price in the new normal. The new normal is that that's the bottom of the range. Now, I could be wrong. Just my opinion. Don't make any financial decisions based upon what I'm sharing with you today. Don't adopt a puppy. Decide to get married. Don't do anything. I'm just sharing with you what I see, what I think, and I want to hear from you below in the comment section. Don't forget, share some information with us. Things are going to be okay. I'll be here with you every day in Ron's basement. We'll navigate these choppy waters. Until next time, you, yes you, be well.